hairstyles. This was no primitive society. Was this pretty girl with a ponytail one of the lost people of Atlantis? Were children sleeping in these cots on that fateful night? All the evidence points to Thera being a prosperous island, her harbors teemed with vessels. In Plato's legend of Atlantis, the area is densely crowded with habitation. The docks were full of boats, triremes, and naval stores, and of vessels and merchants coming from all parts who kept up a multitudinous sound of human voices and din and clatter of all sorts, day and night. In Plato, Atlantis traded with Egypt, as did the people of Thera. And there were other similarities. Plato wrote, They constructed buildings around them and made cisterns. They had fountains, one of hot water and one of cold, in gracious plenty flowing. On the island of Thera, we find multi-story homes that, had, that were just honeycombed with plumbing. There are hints that there might have even been hot water running through these homes. We find flush toilets thousands of years before flush toilets were supposedly invented. We find evidence of showers, bathtubs, uh, many things that uh, we consider very, very advanced uh, and that in Plato's time in, was very advanced even by his standards. Plato also believed Atlantis was in the Atlantic Ocean, but Greeks tended to place great mythical events outside their known world, at the time simply the Mediterranean Sea. And Pellegrino has an explanation for the exaggerated size of Plato's Atlantis. Plato told us that the Atlantean civilization was a very, very large area, that it was the size of Libya and parts of Asia combined. And Thera just is not quite large enough. But when you look at Thera as just a suburb of the Minoan civilization, which was centered on the island of Crete, whose ships seem to have gotten as far as England and Egypt and on the Sea of Galilee. We see here that this was a great economic power in the world that pretty much ran the entire Mediterranean world. It's as if the legend of Atlantis was the history of Minoan civilization. When the Thera volcano erupted, it would have destroyed the Minoan navy in Crete, precipitating a slow, unrelenting decline. The explosion on Thera produced a lot of catastrophic earthquakes that destroyed the palaces of Crete about 1450 years before Christ. The only palace that survived was the Palace of Knossos. And uh, for, for another 50 or so years, Knossos continued to be a prosperous palace, but now the Mycenaeans were the masters of this palace. The Mycenaeans were long jealous of this powerful empire with its fine art and magnificent citadels. As more and more earthquakes devastated this once flourishing civilization, the Mycenaeans moved in. With superior military strength, they swept to an easy victory. The trail of disasters didn't end there. As more earthquakes rocked their broken empire, the frightened people resorted to the ultimate sacrifice. On this mountaintop, a young man's blood was offered to the gods. In vain, the earthquakes still struck. In these ruins, the skulls of the priest and priestess who performed the sacrifice have been found and reconstructed. This is the priestess, and that is the, the priest from the shrine of Akarnit on the island of Crete. The skull would have been um, damaged and fragmented by the falling masonry when the shrine collapsed, almost certainly. It then subsequently caught fire. The priest seems, as the roof rumbled and collapsed on him, he goes backwards 
and is found sprawled beside the altar, and his assistant, the priestess, tries to get away by going into the corner of the room and falls face down. What was found was on the altar, the body of a young man of about 18, tied up the way a bull is tied up for sacrifice in Minoan art. It was a tragic end to a once peaceful and strangely modern civilization. The position of these corpses, the broken bowls and spilt blood, the skeleton of a teenage boy trussed for slaughter, provides a gruesome portrait of those last terrifying days. All human civilizations decline and disappear eventually, but catastrophic earthquakes finally destroyed absolutely everything, not just the palaces, but the towns and even the smallest village. Everything was leveled to the ground. It was absolutely catastrophic. When you look at all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle and you look at them objectively, the, the decline of the Minoan civilization, its takeover by northern Greeks, it all just fits in perfectly with the story that Plato told. They belonged to the very first European civilization. Until this century, no one even knew they existed. But recent revelations have led us back over 3,000 years to discover a peaceful, artistic, but ultimately doomed people. This was a world that was thrown into terrible famine and terrible disorganization. And it's not as today that you have the International Red Cross ready to rush in, that you have the UN sending people in. This was a world where when the Mediterranean was thrown into total chaos, they were on their own. Legends of a lost utopia have always haunted the shadows of history. For generations, we have dreamed of finding the lost continent of Atlantis. Perhaps now, in the Aegean, we finally have. <laughs>